right, so I'm pulling up on a job. Mail lady's in the way. Uh, let's see, we got the van here. Uh, I shouldn't park my truck in there because I'm going to be digging right there. <laughs> My homeowner just said something. What was that? It's incredible. The Hefe is a lord of the sun. Every cell of every block is a motor. You can't believe how much water comes out of the wall. Incredible. They're not working all that well. That wall gets I beam. So it's not as bad. And this wall we're gonna uh, do the outside excavation. When I started to forget that this shit is going on, and then when I'm trying to edit the thing, I got all the reports showing up. You hear But that makes it sound more exciting. He's leveling out the stone, and a lot of people don't even bother to do that. You level out the stone, go, drain it for a it's on an angle, it doesn't fall down in a low spot, and then pull it up off the wall. Just the little things that you do that makes the job a better job. I just want to show that the, like, the stone is level. You need what? Downstairs. For put the guy on uh, the dirt, it's too much. The container, the 20 yards container for doctor, all the dirt in there. What are you wearing a fucking mask for? Okay. He's <laughs> <laughs> like wearing a fucking mask, like I don't give all a right, shit. I see. All right, I'm over here because these are your carbon fiber strips, okay? See, that's your carbon fiber strip. And that's supposed, that's supposed to hold this wall from moving. So it's not holding the wall, and that's all it is. I mean, the design of these things originally, it's supposed to stop it from pulling. And that's what this is, pulling. It's bullshit, it don't work. I don't know, how much did they spend for this? 3,500 bucks? Yeah. 3,500, that's my homework doing the filming. That's 3,500 bucks. So when I talk about i games and I talk about this stuff, and these people who sell this shit, they hate me. i games are the best thing to do if you're going to just hold this. Look at that. I mean, you know what? What the fuck is that supposed to do? I put, if I had some duct tape, I'd put some duct tape. Okay, terrific. This is the end of the first step. And if you see the basement, okay? You don't have tools lying all around. You don't have dirt lying all around. At the end of the day, it has to be clean. It's what we do. It had all the concrete in here, all the dirt that you dug out, but it's all gone. It's a professional job. All of the little things matter. So the entire basement is clean. Okay, that's that. Okay, terrific. so that we can then dig down. We might have concrete below there. Thank you.
Okay, so this pier dig is not as easy as you might think it is. First, you got to cut the pavement, and then when you're uh, digging it out, you got to watch out for this dang thing. And then the foundation has got a little bow in it, so you got to watch out for that. And then you got to watch out for the siding that I hit. God damn it! And then the other thing is, uh, this is pretty deep. The arm's really not long enough, so you got to really get over there to pull it, to be able to pull it in. And now, uh, you can check it out down there. You can see that you got the footer. You've got the footer, and that's going to be cleaned off. And then i want got to come out and have it deeper on the outside so that the uh, plastic goes down, over, down, and on an angle. And this machine is different. You got to have this up, and you got to put this down, and put this button. Make it easier on yourself. Okay? Okay, Tanape! Alright. I'm doing a full one on this thing. I'm trying to get the inside and outside. The I beams over there. Alright, I'm gonna hit the siding. Actually, it goes up. One of the roof was attached to the thing and it jams up in there. I didn't see the roof. That's an easy fix. I'm gonna fix that before the homeowner comes back with some spackles. <laughs> okay, terrific! reversed over here opened up on this side okay terrific okay so everything is stacked up oh wow look at this stuff oh isn't that beautiful how much did that cost me okay carbon fiber strips don't seem to be there anymore just peeled off, okay? This is your carbon fiber strips, they do absolutely nothing. You got this stuff pushed back together. You want to take a take a down side that way. Down here. You got six by six on there. Got the wall pushed out. Almost flush. Oh, see what the fucking problem is? They filled all this shit and so it won't close. Because they put the mortar mix in there. It won't close. This looks good. This looks good down here. This looks good here. It's here. Is this shit? Yeah, look at that. Big this is. I think we should try and chip some of that out with the, with the chapter hammer, maybe. It's all good. You just gotta try to chip that out. Now we chip that out, and now we'll sure be able to get that nice and flush. All right. 
All right, now it should work. That should be good. Very <laughs> eyeball. These are your carbon fiber strips. <laughs> you put these on the wall, and they're supposed to hold it from moving. There's your carbon fiber strip. Uh, let's see. Holy shit, this is ridiculous. Bolt on there. Uh, they bolt it to the top here, right? And they glued it on here, and so <laughs> this is supposed to. I can't fucking do it. <laughs> this is supposed to stop the wall from pulling out like this. It just holds it so that if it moves. This is supposed to hold it, but I think they get 900 bucks for these. So that's a carbon fiber strip. <coughs> and these are I-beams. Now this wall down here was a really bad wall, it was really bowed, and so out. That's the one we're digging out, pushing back into place. We're gonna put the rebar in there. And this wall here wasn't all that bad, so we got I beams on here. These are about the same price. Okay. <laughs> they charge the same for this as I charge for these. Okay? That's four by four steel. Terrific. Let's get the uh We'll the now, let's see, now, let's see what the wall looks like now. Come on, bring the camera over here. See the space up top? See the space up top? Okay, that's what we gotta try to close. Gotta take this out, out of here because you have the mortar in here. Wouldn't let it close. So it wouldn't let it go that way. Put your jacks on that side and I'll, I'll hit this side. Won't bat it. Won't bat it. All right, so you're going back. Why are you doing it that way? We're not going to fucking go be all crooked. Straighten the damn thing out. I'm going to put that in. I'm not going to edit that out. I'm going to leave that in there. Ah, this, this thing's moving. Yeah, yeah. I can't hear it moving. Okay, put it there. tight now flush because the wall went where we wanted it to go. This here was holding it from moving. At least a little bit tighter, a little bit tighter there. We did what we wanted to do. Now I could have just said the hell with it. You know, got it like, oh good enough. That's not what we do. Okay, perfect! This is what was dug out. I'm not climbing down there. I bought some jeans and they're the wrong size, so I'm wearing them on jobs. This is how we do wall pins. Ordinarily, what I like to do is break open the holes below the grade so that they're not going to show. But in this case, the horizontal crack is high. It's about the level of the windows. So we got to break out the hole above it. What you do is you put the rebar down, straight down in all of the cells because the cells line up. The rebar, that's like a 10 foot, 8 foot, 10 foot, whatever it is, piece of rebar that you put all the way down inside of the walls. Then you got to wet that wall inside, otherwise the concrete's not going to stick. You got to understand that. That's got to be wet before you put your cement in there, otherwise the concrete's not going to stick. If it's wet, then it actually adheres and the concrete becomes a part of the block. So it gives you more 
stability. That has to cure up. If you don't let that cure up long enough, when you backfill, it's going to just push the wall back in. You can leave your bracing up, but you still got to let it cure long enough. Having the holes above the grade creates more work because now we're going to have to fill that and parge coat that and make that look uh, presentable. So if you do this first, and then you, what we're going to do is we're going to waterproof the outside. We're going to put our thick tar on there, clean this off, put our thick tar, and then put my 12 mil, uh, put the 12 mil uh, plastic up on there. You're going to go along the wall, over the footer, down to the footer, and then that's going to waterproof the basement. From the outside, we got the waterproofing from the inside, and this is what we're doing. I usually don't show uh, wall pins, but it's called a wall pin because it's rebar pin goes on the wall, wall pin, duh. When you're gonna do an outside job, rent the machine for a week. What the fuck is that? You rent the machine for a week. A week usually goes from... See that? They don't even stop working for me to do my video. Okay, just for the hell of it, we're going to look inside and see how the wall was straightened out. So six by sixes, we're all straight on the wall now. Everything's flush. Everything's flush. So the wall is straight now through the wall pins, make sure it sets up, leave these in place, and then we'll do the waterproofing, uh, fill this in with concrete. I'm out of here, I'm gonna go run that machine. Hopefully I get done with that in about two hours. So I gotta go to Fairhaven where they're doing the dig out, cause they're ready for concrete, and I wanna get a video on that. Then where else, I wanted to go someplace else, but I can't remember where it is. I'll remember later. I'm gonna pick up a check there and I need a check here. Okay, terrific! Now I missed putting the tar on there. The kind of tar, in this case, we don't use this kind of tar all the time, but on this one, it's this stuff. Sometimes we use this stuff, and sometimes we use the uh, roll on. Never get any of that tar on one finger. You get it on one finger, then it gets into the truck, on your pants, on your furniture. One little thing in that tar. The wall pins are there, full of concrete. I'm gonna check it tomorrow. It looks like it's curing up. And it's the plastic. Plastic is adhered to that, down the wall, over the footer, and down to the bottom. Okay, so today I'm heading up to that wall job because I want to finish this video. I'm not on the jobs that much anymore. I'm not on the jobs. So I, you know, when the job is finished in the end, then I'll go up and videotape it to finish it. But this one I'm going to finish because I have not been on YouTube or paid attention to it for uh, over a year. And I see that other videos are coming in a little bit above me, so it's time for me to do something. So today I'm actually going out of my way on a Friday to drive all the way up there and uh, do a... <laughs> uh, not really, I've got to go further up north because i got to collect some cash. It's $12,000 on the job. So, there you go. We on? Okay. Everything's put back on this job. Once we get it straight from the inside, we put the wall pins in. We broke out the hole. You can see the hole, but you can't go all the way up here with the with the wall pins. The top lock here, even if you got the uh, wall pin up in there, uh, when you put the, you got your block here, wall's nice and straight, and you put the soil back in, it can push the top lock in which is what happened, but we'll get to that. So, this is all closed back in. This is all finished. I mauled one of those shingles and that's been fixed. 
this here thing was a pain in the ass um, because it's one of those gates that goes like this and my guy was able to put all that back together so this is finished and because you can't get a wall pin in that top block and the weight of this pushes it in the top block kicked in a little bit now we'll go inside oh my homeowner is doing videotape all right all right okay so this is the wall and this is the top block here it's, you can see it's right where the pavement is and this wall kicked in a little bit and this this top block kicked in so it made this gap I could have said fine and dandy no big deal but I'm standing here and I'm looking at it and I couldn't live with it so I put five I-beams on here just to make it the wall would not have gone any place but I put the five I-beams on there because I want to make sure that it's secure now of course, the homeowner gets here, and what was the first thing you thought, Bob? You were gonna charge me more. <laughs> <laughs> I don't do that. You see, once I tell somebody a, a price, it stays that way. If I find extra shit on a job, I just go ahead and do it. If I decide that I'm gonna add this stuff, I add it. I make sure the job is done properly, and I don't charge the homeowner anything else. On my one of my jobs. I showed how I-beams are done when you have the bearing wall. You gotta get the I-beam. You wanna flush to the top block. I got a six by six across here. I have my I-beam against the top block. I have my six by six holding that in, and my two liners against the six by six glued and bolted so the two liners on the side are never gonna move. Now we're gonna go to the bottom and I'll show you what happens. I don't need to use angle lines on the stone against the concrete like this. I'm gonna get the bottom snug against the bottom block, just like I got the top snug against the top block. The I-beam is going to have a bow in it, but it's going to constantly maintain the pressure against the wall. The whole wall. All right, that's 20 tons, it ain't going nowhere. Tight, and you're tight all the way up top. They cut metal, you really should have gloves on because it burns the hell out of your hands. All right, so the rebar is going to go against the I-beam and the bottom of that angle line that I put in there and loosen that and voila. This is not the bearing wall but it's the wall that caved in or came in. So you have to do it a little bit different. You can't press it all the way against there. You can't make it as tight as I make the ones on, on the bearing wall. But you get the I-beam between the floor beam. Always when you have your outer band box you'll have like 16 inches in so you'll always have enough room here. We shim this out and we have the four by six as a block, a block, and then we have a block so that you got this and this and this that will never move, which will hold the I-beam in place. Now originally we put five uh, I-beams here. I was part of the original job. I didn't show this on that end, but it's done the same way. So this is $4,000 worth of work. You see the concrete? You can see it's level here. And the finish on the concrete is a really nice finish. And we usually have like about two inches of this uh, drainage board uh, that's showing. You got a footer on this, and then you got your 10 inch trench there. If you have some kind of system in your, on your job and you have an issue with it, or on your basement, or even if somebody's doing a job, and they put in this little trench, it's never going to work. You've got to have 10 inches. The reason for that is because people talk about fibrous filter paper. Uh, this is what's called fibrous filter paper. See the mud, the dirt build up in it? It's clogging the filter. It's not allowing the water to get through. You can't come in and break up the concrete to change out uh, a filter in one of these systems when it gets clogged. Anytime I go into a job that's not working and I have to redo it, it's always this wide. I know the job is not done right. If it's not wide enough, then it's not deep enough. This is a footer. This footer is level at the bottom. The trench is dug out level to the bottom. The pipe is laid in level to the bottom. This is a lot of debris to carry out of a home or off of a job. And that's why guys cut corners. They don't want to do this much work. Everything's done. Beautiful job. Now I'm going to put the homeowner on. <laughs> How do you feel, Bob? Pretty good. Looks nice and dry now. It came back. We did extra work. I'm uh, quite happy with it. Looks great. They didn't paint my floor though. Ah. <laughs> Can't have everything. 
All right, so we're all good. You're happy. And you know what? I used to do this. <laughs> okay, so I'm all done. And uh, man does not live by pickup truck alone. I never drive that two jobs doing estimates. But when I'm coming to collect money, and that's that.